guys hear me? Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Mary Reproductive Loss Syndrome, and like he said, he did uh, talk to me about this whenever I was talking about doing honors presentations, so give the credit to him. Uh, so basically, what is it? So in the spring of 2001, in Kentucky, um, there was a bunch of abortions that were happening in the mares, and the reason that this was really important to them is because this is where all the thoroughbreds are for the tracks, and so this was a big deal around the world because they were losing a lot of uh, foals that were kind of expensive. Overall, in 2001, they lost about, I think, 300 million, and then it occurred in 2002 as well, and they lost about 500 million. So this was really important to them. Um, but it was abortions and stillbirths, and it affected hundreds, but it wasn't just the mares. It was also um, both sexes and all ages, and the reason that it was all ages is because there were other diseases that were going along with it, like pericarditis and uvitis, and I'll get more into those in just a second. Um, but it also occurred after this, so it was also in Ohio in 2002, it was in Australia in 2004, and then it occurred in Florida in 2006. So the research and causes, so like I said, it was in Kentucky where all the um, breeders were, so that was really important to everyone. And so they put a lot of veterinaries on this case to figure out what was going on. So they did everything they could do to figure out what was going on with the horses. So they did virology, bacteriology, toxicology, um, epidemiology, just to figure out what was going on. And they realized while doing this research that the same thing had occurred in 1981, which they had just pushed it off as uh, toxicity from fescue but they knew that's not what was going on on these breeding farms. And so the commonalities that they found was bacteria, eastern tent caterpillars, and black cherry trees. And so they found out that um, the bacteria was caused by the caterpillars, um, and then black cherry trees was just where their nests were. And so there's two possibilities of what was causing um, the issues from the caterpillars. So it was either the hairs, which is also called CD, and it was thought that they were um, basically tearing the intestinal line or puncturing it and then allowing bacteria to enter through there and causing basically a systematic bacterial infection. Um, and then the other one was that possibly there was a toxin on the exoskeleton. And so I'm just gonna go in a little bit more detail about what was going on. So in the mares, there was early, early fetal loss, which was around like 40 to 80 days into gestation, but sometimes it could go as late as 140 days and then late fetal loss, which was around 10 months into gestation. So you never really knew when it was going to happen. And then there were stillbirths, pericarditis, uvitis, colitis, which is just inflammation of the um, large bowel, and then red bag delivery. I'll give you guys a second. I'm gonna go more into those in just a second. All right, so fibrinous, pericarditis, so basically what this is, if you break down the word, is that it's inflammation of the lining of the heart. And fibrinous is just referring to, so if you look at the color of this, that like whitish kind of protein that's on that is what fibrinous occur, um, is like referring to. And it's also known as bread and butter, which I found interesting. Can you guys guess why this is called bread and butter? You know when you put two pieces of bread together with butter on it and you pull it apart? Yeah, I thought that was weird. And then there's uvitis. And this is also called moon blindness, and it's just because of the way that the eye looks whenever they get this. And basically, if you look over here, it's just the uvea, and it's the inflammation of the uvea of the eye, which is just like the middle part. And then there's red bag delivery. And so what this is, is basically just whenever the bag, um, it basically tears off earlier than what it's supposed to. Um, and it's just, it's the placenta that is falling off earlier. Usually it comes off after the, um, or it is, so it comes out after the full, but in um, the red bag delivery, it comes out before. And do you guys know what the red bag provides to the horses or to the foals? So it provides oxygen, which I heard someone say, and then it provides nutrients as well. So if this comes out before the full, it's most likely gonna cause an abortion. Um, if you don't get a vet out soon because they're not going to have oxygen or nutrients provided to them. And then also we have stuff occurring in fools. While the majority of them were aborted, there were some that were born alive. And basically when they're born alive, they had a lot of issues. Um, a lot of them had neurological signs, uh, respiratory issues, low white blood cell counts, um, low glucose levels. And then they did examinations on the aborted fools as well to see what was happening to them. 
and they would have pneumonia, hemorrhage, pericarditis, just as the mares did, and then phunicitis, which is basically um, inflammation of the uh, umbilical cord, the connective tissue for it. And the reason I wanted to go over these diseases is that the majority of them are caused by bacteria, and this is why they're included in MRLS, because they wanted to show you that the CD, whenever it um, allows that bacteria to get into the blood system, it causes all of these diseases along with it. And then we have prevention. So the main prevention they did was trying to cut down the trees that were in the pastures, um, because this is where their nests are at. So they were hoping that if they removed the nest, they would remove the problem. While this isn't 100% effective, it was just an idea because they didn't know how to get rid of the eastern tent caterpillars. And then restriction to pasture, mainly just the pastures with trees, or you could cut them down. It was kind of up to you. And then insecticides, just to get rid of the tent caterpillars, while there weren't any specific ones, spe like specifically for the caterpillars, you could try anything. And then ultrasounds was just so that you could check on the foals to make sure that they were developing. But this wasn't always helpful because they can occur in late pregnancy as well, so you don't know, um, even in late pregnancy. And then grazing muzzle, this is an option. It's not the best option because the caterpillars can still technically get through the muzzle, but it is gonna make it less likely for the caterpillars to be ingested by the horses. Also, um, just something to add to this is they did do an experiment um, with the caterpillars to make sure that the caterpillars were causing it. And so they would orally administer um, to pregnant mares the caterpillars and they did get the same causes of abortion. So they proved that it was occurring from them. They just don't know if it was from the CD or from the exoskeleton. And of course this is recorded and tonight I'll upload it in case you